All right, catcher men. Today, we're gonna go over the best way to catch flounder. We had a super successful day. So it's gonna be a really informative video, especially for people new to flounder fishing. And if you use these tactics, you will get on more fish. So let's first talk about the rig we're using today. We are going with the tandem rig. And we love the tandem rig when you're flounder fishing because basically you can get two baits in the water at once, increasing your chances. And one good tip when using the tandem rig, put your heavier bait at the bottom. This will be right around the bottom, making sure it's in contact with the ground where the flounder are hiding. But then with this lighter jig or bait up top, it's going to let you get a little lighter fluttering down motion, giving a little more action. And that killer combo here is going to definitely increase your hookup. So when you're flounder fishing, definitely give these tandem rigs a try. We got maybe an eighth ounce jig head here, and we have a sixteenth ounce jig head with this voodoo shrimp. In the video, you'll see we caught three or four keepers, and they were hitting both of these, one on the bottom, one top. So that just goes to show we might not have caught all those if we were just using one. So mix it up and you can even use different profile bait. So we got a little swim bait here, we got a shrimp here. Mix it up, see what's working the best in your area. All right, so now you're gonna see how we put this tandem rig to action. So at this first spot, there was a creek mouth opening into a bigger piece of water, a smaller bay. So that was a really good spot to hit. And I was just trolling these lures behind my kayak, going nice and slow, making sure that it's hitting the bottom, boom, 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 and this one was floating up top. As I was doing that nice slow movement out of the creek, boom, that's when the fish hit. And the tide was moving, so there's gonna be a lot more current moving. And flounder, they're those predatory fish, and they're gonna sit where there's current moving. Uh, because they sit on the bottom and they wait for the food to come over top of them and come up and gobble it. When you're flounder fishing, you wanna make sure that you are moving a lot and covering a lot of ground because the flounder aren't gonna move you need to go and find them. And that's what happened on this first fish. Oh, something good. Flounder. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, mama mia. Bring it here. <laughs> nice. Look at him. Tandem rig. That was the tandem rig that we were using. He hit the very bottom one. Probably about a half ounce sinker on there with a Z-Man diesel. Not bad at all. There you go. There he goes. Now guys, that was on that Z-Man diesel tandem rig. I was coming out of the mouth of a creek and whammo. That hit right there. I was just trolling super slow, making sure my lure was on the bottom. And that's when he struck and you could feel man he just took off and ran with it very very good very good i like that one we let him go the season is open but i'm gonna be out here for a couple more hours i don't know if he'll stay alive on the stringer so i figured best let him go keep my luck going and once you catch a fish while you're trolling it's always a good idea to stop and test those waters out because obviously there's one fish there so take a few casts back and Try that spot out again. That's the first spot that I hit and caught the flounder in. And while I was paddling around that creek, I found a honey hole looking spot. There was just a couple tidal creeks coming in. And I thought, you know, what's great to use here is a popping cork. Because the popping cork works great when there's flowing water. Because you sort of let the bobber do all the movement for you. And when you're floating something, it's going to look the most natural as possible because it's gonna go at the same current as the water. And so that's why I switched up to a little popping cork and I fished it just so the lure was right above the bottom, maybe two or four inches above the bottom. And that's when he just gobbled it. I was letting it go down, giving it a nice pop, probably every five to 10 seconds. And he hit it at the mouth of the creek, go figure. That is a great spot to fish. For each of these rigs, we're using our favorite flounder rod and reel combo. Check out that card. Can't beat it. Puts the smack down on some flounder. Beneath our popping courts, we love to throw on a voodoo shrimp because of this segmented tail. It, it's the most natural looking shrimp lure out there on the market. It's the voodoo shrimp. And go check it out. We got it in the description below. We have all the gear that we're using in the description below. 
the best rod, the best reel, the line, the lures, everything you need. So I was just popping this popping cork and the fish jumped on it. What you want to do with the popping cork? Let's give it a nice, get a nice firm pop. You want those beads to clack together? Makes a nice popping sound. Sounds like shrimp popping underwater. That's what brings the fish to them. And I'm letting the current do the movement, keeping my line taut as it moves down. Oh, that might be a hit. Nice flounder, nice flounder. Oh yeah. Stay down. There we go. <laughs> oh man, Luke's gonna be Jones and all right. Let's see if we can get this hook out. Got the lure. All right, I think he's good to go. It is flounder season. I do want flounder to eat. Plenty of fishing to do though. 18 inches and that means he's ready to go see you mr flounder <laughs> oh that was awesome well guys i took a break from the kayak my back was hurting plus there was just too much current to pass up right here one tidal creek flowing in to this big pool another tidal creek flowing out too flounder loved that current just drifting my popping cork through this little creek with the current and boom he gulped it and he, he swallowed that pretty good um, that's why when we use bait we usually use circle hooks um, but luckily i was able to get that out and he looked pretty healthy he swam back to his spot that was good 18 incher uh, i don't think he was quite as big as the first one but put up a good fight let's get some more since we caught one flounder in the creek we're gonna keep on moving up there's a lot of bait moving through here so there should be some fish All right, so let's talk tide and structure. So as we alluded to, we're looking for moving water. If you're fishing high tide, going to low, so it's a falling tide, all those bait fish at high tide are gonna be pushed up into the creek. But when the tides start to come out, those bait fish are gonna be forced to come back down the creek into the main water channel, and those flounder know that. They're smart fish. So they're gonna be sitting right at that creek mouth, looking upstream, because the bait are gonna be coming that way. Use that to your advantage cast that lure or line or whatever you're using up the creek so it comes back with the water the same way the bait's going to be moving. And then vice versa with high tide. So high tide, the water's going to be pushing up into the creeks. Those flounder, again, are going to be stationed up at the creek mouth, but this time they're going to be facing the other direction towards the bigger water as those minnows start to make their way to the creek. Flounder's just going to be waiting there for ambush. Boom, 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 smoke them. And around creek mouths, Look for nice drop-offs, because that's where the flounder are gonna be kind of hitting out right on that ledge. That gives the most advantage, so when the kind of mullet swim right over that ledge, boom, they don't even see them coming. So like Jack said, find that current, throw your tanner rig upstream of the current, and reel it back with the water. So it's looking really natural. Reel it back with the current, bumping along, and that flounder is gonna be laying there. It's gonna be coming down with the current looking super natural. Boom, flounder smack down. And that's how Jack caught this flounder. Gotta put a fresh new hook on right there. Leader's a little short than I like. I usually like five to six inches there. But there we go. Set up, let's do it. He's on, he's on. <laughs> Another flounder. Boop, yo. That's the one we'll keep. Number three on the day. On that tandem rig. <sighs> on that one, he took the top one. Look at that. He tore that hook up. That was the gulp up top. The diesel minnow on the bottom. So that's the best way to catch flounder, but make sure you check out this next playlist we curated that has every single thing you need to know about flounder from rigs 
gear to use, what time of day, tactics, techniques, and then finally cooking them. All right, so go check this out now to become the most complete flounder fisherman you can. Booyah!